Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the Sky Channel. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about your Queen's class. I'm going to be going over the different classes that we have, Cultivator, Raider and Herder. And I'm also going to go over which one you should be using and what are the benefits of each. At the end of the video I'm going to share with you a trick that I've learned over um, a lot of testing that I've done which allows you to really grow your classes much faster and I'm sure that's going to be extremely helpful for you. But before we get started, I do want to give a big shout out to Lich. He's the one who actually came up with this idea that I should make this video and also did a lot of information gathering for me to help me make this video great. Before that, I never even thought of making this video. So thank you so much for getting us there. So let's get started. As I mentioned before, there are three classes. There's Cultivator, Raider, and Herder. Now, what are the benefits of each? Well, Cultivator, as you can see here, you get a certain number of protection of the, uh, of the resources that you have. Uh, not a very major thing, I believe. Gathering speed, plus 50%. I'd say this is the most valuable uh, buff you get due to this class. And then there's the Troop Load, plus 100% when gathering. Also fairly helpful. Now, if you go to the class building resource factory, essentially, you'll notice that there's a bunch of other buffs you get. And the most valuable here is another gathering speed plus 25% that you get, which is limited to your pro unit. So you'll notice that if you send all four units of yours for gathering, the pro unit will always get done first. Essentially, this is the reason it actually has a uh, uh, an additional buff that allows it to gather even faster. Now let's go back here and talk about the um, the cons of the cultivator class. Well, you can see troop attack minus 30 when invading, troop defense minus 30 when invading, and march speed minus 30%. So essentially you 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 probably realize that uh, the cultivator class isn't meant for fighting. It has a lot of debuffs, which are not very great. And that's where the raider class comes in. If you look at their, uh, their pros, you'll notice that you have an additional load when invading in case you want to be uh, farming other hills. You also notice that 40% of your dead turn into injured when invading. Fairly helpful if you are doing a lot of hill attacks. And then there's the healing speed plus 100%. Definitely very helpful, especially in Lost Island. And if you go to the class building, trophy storeroom, you'll notice that you actually get an additional 25% attack and defense due to this. And this also obviously only impacts your pro unit. So your pro unit gets much stronger. Compared to the Cultivator class, obviously, you're also skipping out on these minus 30% and minus 30% attack and defense. Um, you, you are definitely much stronger as a Raider. Now, if we talk about the cons of the Raider, the output has been reduced of plant, meat, wet soil, and sand. Probably not something I'd consider major. Honeydew has also reduced. Again, not a big deal. Uh, troop load when gathering is reduced by 50%. This probably is the only negative thing I can see for the Raider class. Um, essentially, your troop load has reduced, um, which impacts you in particularly during Alliance Expedition. And now we go to the Herder class. Now, Herder class is not something I'm very excited about. I feel it is something which is more beneficial for farm accounts, but I'll go through it either way. Uh, honeydew output increases, uh, food costs of your troops reduces, uh, you get cheaper stuff at the ladybird habitat. Um, not very exciting so far. Uh, it does give you additional garrison attack and defense, so that's something very interesting, I'd say. That's uh, the only real good thing I see for this class. Um, and if you go into the corn, the resources raided by enemies substantially increase 
when they attack you. Now, this is technically not a con. Most of the people who are herders usually are pharmacons, so they actually want this. The second one is healing speed is uh, reduced. Essentially, healing uh, takes a longer time, uh, which is obviously not very good. So, as I mentioned before, I'd probably be doing this only if I had a farm account. Now, it is worth mentioning that you do have the option of changing between your classes, and you could change your class for free every three days. Uh, at the same time, if you decide to purchase these items from the VIP store, they cost 3,000 diamonds, so you can buy one more extra class change um, every week. And you also have the ability to purchase them if you decide that you need some extras. They cost around uh, 28 Canadian dollars. That's about 20 US dollars. So you can also buy them. Uh, so those are the ways that you can switch your classes. Um, my suggestion for you is that try to minimize that as much as you can so you can save these class change items for when you need them most. And now we can start going into more detail about each of the classes. And I'm going to start with the Cultivator. So the key benefit of the Cultivator class that I've mentioned before is gathering. Now, if you look on this side, you'll notice that there's a lot of meat gathering buffs that I have. And they give a decent amount, 21%, 15%. Uh, 7% and then, you know, 60,000 and 45,000, all of them combined, they make me really, really fast at gathering meat. And the reason I chose meat is because I have the most buffs for it, right? You can see that this is in progress. Uh, it's level three. There's two more coming up after which it's going to be 35%. Now, I obviously do not like meat it is the most it is the least valuable resource but the fact that i can gather it really fast is highly beneficial for me in particular when i go to lost island it gives me a lot of lost island fruit because you do get fruit based on how much you gather if you haven't watched a lost island video please do so it will explain this much better uh, i don't have the time to go through it in more detail but essentially the more you can gather, the better. Now, Lost Island Fruit isn't the only benefit I get from this. This uh, These large number of buffs, they allow me to become the MVP during gathering day as well. So each week, if I really want, I can easily beat most enemies. Unless, of course, they are as advanced in their cultivator class as I am. Or they're loaded with cell items. Uh, so those are two key benefits of the Cultivator class, and it doesn't really stop at level 131. If you keep going lower, you'll notice that you actually get even more uh, gathering buffs at 100, level 159. Uh, you could also switch to Leaf, which at 166, you probably have the exact same buffs for Meat and Leaf. Um, the same can't be said about sand. See, right now I only have three sand buffs. Usually sand and wet soil is a little bit behind uh, meat and leaf. So I know we all love wet soil and sand, but unfortunately you're going to be collecting meat and leaf much faster. And if you care about MVP and Lost Island Fruit, you might as well choose uh, the resource that gives you the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, the other thing about the cultivator class is right here, you actually get additional gathering load and additional march speed while gathering. These buffs are particularly useful when you are doing alliance expedition, right? It allows you to gather much faster, you'll reach 20,000 points much faster, and you could potentially become MVP uh, with a much higher probability due to these. And as you advance further, you'll notice that there are additional uh, buffs like these that help you in Alliance Expedition that do come down the road as well. Though perhaps it comes really late in the game 
right here, gathering load plus 30%, right? But of course, it's very close to level 200. Most likely, you're going to end up with these three for a very long time before you get to that one. So that covers the stuff I want to talk about, the cultivator class. So now let's go to the radar class. Now, radar classes do have a bunch of interesting stuff like march speed, then you have defense and attack buffs as well. But my radar class isn't very advanced, so I'm going to take you over here. And I'm going to tell you that the biggest benefit that you get as a raider is when you get fairly more advanced, you start unlocking skill attack. And of course, it's available for all, all of the three classes. And then if you scroll down further, you also get skill defense, right? So the first one is 5% skill attack that you're looking at. Then you have 10% skill defense. Again, same for all three classes. And then if you scroll down further, it actually gives you another skill attack, this time 10%. So it actually adds up to 15% skill attack, 10% skill defense. And as you keep getting more and more advanced, it actually gives you health as well. Um, so those are benefits that you get as a raider. I'd say targeting the 15% skill attack and 10% skill defense is probably the best for you if you decide that you want to play more as a raider. If you love fighting, 15% skill attack is extremely beneficial. Uh, the other buffs are good as well, but they don't really, in my opinion, uh, because ever get as close to the benefit you get from the skill attack and skill defense. So that's the real bang you get from Raider. So now let's go to the Herder class. And as I mentioned before, I'm not too excited about the Herder, and essentially that's the reason why I never really give it any love, so it's still level zero, but let's go into a little bit of uh, detail about its uh, benefits. Now, one thing you should know as a herder is that it does give you a lot of these buffs that give you certain additional points, like gathering points. Uh, and if you scroll down further, you'll notice that it actually gives you hunting points as well, building points as well, and a lot of the different uh, server versus server it gives you extra points for those. So if you are having trouble getting to ninth shell, this can be fairly helpful for you. And as you keep getting uh, more advanced, the points keep increasing for each of the different stuff. So you could have stacked up a lot of these different um, SPS point buffs and it can make you getting ninth shell much easier. Uh, Again, I still insist that this is something more helpful for you if you are a farm account because as you become more and more advanced, uh, getting 9th shell isn't really tricky, right? You usually get 9th shell anyway. Uh, additionally, if you're thinking about MVP, you could get MVP a few times, but most of the times you're usually competing with others that are going to be fighting as well. So you need to really push hard to become MVP other than gathering day where people don't have an opportunity to push really hard. Uh, getting MVP each day for all the other days is fairly complicated. You're going to end up using a lot of different resources and speed ups to get there and it's not particularly sustainable. And of course, as I mentioned, gathering day is the only exception, but during gathering day, you're going to be a cultivator, not a herder. So perhaps not something that I would invest in. Again, as I mentioned before, herder is amazing if you are creating farm accounts and you want to get resources off of them. So that covers all three classes. Next, we are going to talk about how to upgrade the classes, and then I'll show you that little trick that I learned that is definitely going to help you as well. So the way to upgrade your class is essentially Warzone Construction. Now, if you go take a look at the top, there are three different quests that are available. Uh, these are only available for you if you purchase the light contract. 
essentially giving you one extra quest each day. For those who don't have a light contract, ignore these. Uh, you'll probably be looking at the options underneath that uh, based on the class that you have. So I'm Cultivator, so I'll have to choose from one of these different options. Now, the five options essentially are a little bit of a trade-off between time that you spend and the experience that you get. Uh, the most experience comes from the five-hour quest, and then as you keep reducing the time, the experience also reduces, with the exception over here, there are four hours for both, but one gives you more, one gives you less. As you can imagine, this one will get filled up faster than the other one. I always try to go for this one, the most experience. Uh, time isn't too much of an issue for me. I prefer getting as much experience as I can. I would probably advise you to do the same. If you are able to, always go for the best one for your class. Um, there's a little bit of a trick that I've learned, and this is not the trick I'm going to tell you at the end of the video, but if you notice that, let's say, this one is full, uh, you can actually decide to switch to a different class, like Herder, which is likely not going to be full, uh, start the quest, and then switch to the class of your choice. Now, it's not essentially a very good tip and the reason is because it costs you uh, it, at minimum you're going to be cost it's going to cost you one of those class change items not sustainable in the long run not a good idea the only time you may want to do it is if you had switched to one class and you were considering switching to the other one just take a look at the uh, the quests if the current class is lighter in the best quest, start the quest here and then switch classes. Otherwise, switch class and then start the quest based on whichever class has a lighter, uh, uh, you know, the best class quest, if that makes sense. Um, so there's that. So you can see 190,000. And as I believe as your server gets more advanced, this also keeps increasing. Uh, but I will say that there are certain buffs that you get in your class feature that improve that like this one, it gives you 125,000 extra experience. And there's a bunch of different ones in every single class 125,000. This one actually reduces the time it takes to do the quest. Uh, and as you scroll lower, you'll notice that there's another one, 40% 40, 40 experience. Uh, here's another one, minus 15% construction time. You could collect a lot of these buffs and they will be very helpful uh, for you in reducing the time for these class quests as well as increasing the experience you get from them. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention while I was talking about that trick is that you get experience based on your current class. So even if you had started the quest as a herder, uh, once the quest completes, if you're a cultivator by that time, you'll get the class experience in the cultivator class. So that's why it was beneficial for you to use this trick uh, only in the cases where you're thinking of switching classes. So now it's time to talk about that trick that I was mentioning in the beginning of the video. So if you go into the class feature, currently I have all of the experience buffs active. I'm gonna go show you each of them. They're all experience. We give a decent amount of experience, but I'm gonna switch the three of them to construction time and three because I currently only have three of them. Right, so one of them gives reduces by 15%, the other one reduces by 10%, the third one reduces by 5%. Right, so I got all three of them active, not the experience that I currently have. We'll get back to that again, don't worry. I'll show it to you several times. Now we're going to do the five hour quest, the best one. And I've sent my troops. What I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to speed things up. I don't want you guys to be waiting, so I'll actually use speed ups. Um, 30 seconds is still too slow. Let me use a few more. Okay, so six seconds, perfect. So the quest is just about to begin and it's begun. 
Now, if you go into uh, the units, you'll notice it's at three and a half hours, right? So it was a five hour thing. Now it's only three and a half hours and you can see it here as well. What I want to do next is that I'm going to go into the buffs and I'm going to switch them all to experience buffs. So even though I had the um, reduced time, I'm going to switch them to the experience one. So all of mine are back to being full experience. And and of course, I want you to keep track of this number, 264,793. Um, so what's next is I do want to also show you that the time has not reduced. It's still three and a half hours uh, quest, even though all of the are all of all of my buffs are now experience buffs. Um, what I'm going to prove to you at the end of the video is that once this whole thing completes, I'll still get a full amount of experience as if all of the experience buffs were active in the beginning of this. So now I'm going to fast forward time to complete this was on construction. I obviously have no plans of keeping you here for three and a half hours. And we are back. Well, the war zone construction is almost about to end. If we go there, 20 seconds are left. And in just a little while, this war zone construction will end. And I want to show you the amount of experience that we get. So the countdown is just 10 seconds. And let's go back to the experience page so that you are remembering how much it was. 264,793 becomes 891,000. And 93. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, just by looking at it, you can tell that this is definitely using all the experience buffs. All right, so let's open the calculator to prove this with math. So 891,093 minus 264,793 gets us 626,300 experience. Just by looking at this, you should be able to tell that that's a lot of experience given the original experience for the class experience quest was 190,000. But you know what I'll do? I want to sh prove this to you with evidence. So tomorrow, we're going to do the same quest again, but this time from start to finish, we will use the class experience buffs throughout. So you're going to have a five hour quest tomorrow and I expect us to get exactly 626,300 experience, exactly the same as today's. However, tomorrow's quest will be five hour long as should be, but today's quest was three and a half hour long. So essentially, you're gonna get the same amount of experience using this trick in only three and a half hours, which you would have otherwise required five hours for. So let's see you all tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day, but before we get to the class experience quest. I don't want to mention that I was the king, so I got 31,884 experience extra, which means that we are a little higher. We are 922,977 experience. Now that's our new base. Time to do the class quest. All right, so first I'm going to show you that I have all the experience buffs active. As you can see, straight line, all of them are experience. And let's do the quest. And I'm going to send my fastest troop. You can see I have all the masters in there to make things faster. And of course, we're going to do a speed up trick. We're going to make sure everything goes super fast so you guys don't have to wait. And now we will go in and check that it's a full five hour quest. And there you go. Five hours, right? Same thing as yesterday, just that today it's five hours instead of three and a half. And remember, 922,977. That's the number that we're going to compare with. Okay, let's see each other once this gets done. It's five hours are left, and I'm going to take a quick break right after this, and then we'll compare with 922,977. See you guys soon. And we are back. All right, so just a few seconds are left. You can see about 10 seconds. And what we're going to do is we're going to check how much experience we got. So remember, 922,000. 977 and it should be completed and it's done okay so 1,549,277 experience and now we're gonna go to the calculator all right we got the calculator open 1549277 minus 922977 
626,300, which is exactly the same as yesterday, and it's proven that this actually works. So remember, yesterday we got this exact same experience in only three and a half hours, that today it took us five hours. So you want to make sure you utilize the trick that I showed you yesterday uh, every day. And that one and a half hour can make a major difference for me. It essentially means that I get my troop back before going to sleep and hence I can put it out for gathering and hence I'll be gathering overnight. Something that I usually am not doing because I don't have my unit back from the war zone construction. So I hope this video was very helpful for you. I hope you learned something valuable from it. Uh, if nothing else, I hope this final tip was fairly helpful for you. You'll be saving a bunch of time each day. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please like the video, please comment below, and please subscribe to our channel. We'll be continuing to produce more and more content, and hopefully you'll like a, a lot of the other content and videos as well. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys again soon, shortly.